Hey everybody, it's Maxine Taylor with a special edition of my astrological forecasts. Uh, what I'd love to do today for you is go through what is going on now and take it down to the end of 2018 because there's so much that you are going to want to know about so that you'll be able to navigate your life uh, confidently and 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 move forward no matter what's going on uh, elsewhere whether our government or another country um, etc with that in mind I want to remind you one more time that I'm offering my three clips special and when I finish this report you'll this video report today you'll understand why this is on my website, MaxineTaylor.com. It is a terrific roadmap, not just for the next 12 months, but for the next 18 months, because there's a lot getting ready to happen. Okay, let's first of all go back to something, this lovely diagram, this picture I made uh, several months back that talked about what we were going to be going through. In other words, what we're, what's happening now. I started with Mars retrograde, and that is the framework around the, it's the frame of the picture. Mars went retrograde on June 27th in nine Aquarius 13. Okay, it will not, now when, when Mars goes retrograde, we're, we've been feeling it, nothing happens. Mars rules action and energy and sex and passion and anger and war and gunfire. <sighs> okay. It, it, wherever Mars is in your birth chart, that's the area of life that comes first to you. So uh, find nine Aquarius in your birth chart because that's where the retrograde Mars began. Now Mars will go direct on August 28th in 28 degrees of Capricorn. So you're going to want to see where that falls in your birth chart. Because when Mars goes direct, that is when everything leaps forward. When Mars is retrograde, nothing happens. We kind of flatline. A lot of talking, not much action. Okay, moving forward on July 13th, we had a lovely, solar eclipse in 20 Cancer 41. This uh, was a, so, uh, a solar eclipse, is a new moon, and so the energy began moving forward. Great. On July 27th, we had a very powerful full moon lunar eclipse in 4 Aquarius 15. Now Mars had backed up to 5 Aquarius, between 4 and 5. So there's fire literally fire look at the west coast of the united states um arguing well look at government you get the picture it was a very powerful eclipse now mercury went retrograde the 26th of july now we feel a retrograde mercury about a week before it goes retrograde so let's say the beginning of July, we start, excuse me, not the beginning of July, um, July 20th, I was looking at the beginning of the 20s. Um, on July 20th, a lot of people told me that they were starting to feel the Mercury retrograde. I did also, a lot of people did. Okay, Mer when Mercury goes retrograde, everything is confused. We are in a time when Mercury is still retrograde. It will go direct on August 19th, yay, in 11 Leo 32. Find that in your birth chart because that's where things will start, hopefully, getting unconfused. We'll, it'll be in the shadow of the retrograde for a while, but hopefully it will start moving forward nicely. Then on August 11th, that's Saturday, this coming Saturday, we have the final eclipse of this period um, in 18 Leo 42. Again, it's a new moon, so find that in your birth chart, and that's where things start moving forward. So these are the three eclipses. Now, Mercury will go direct on August 
19th in 11 Leo 32. Not too terribly far from the eclipse that will have just happened. And you say, yay, I can start new projects because you don't want to start a new project on a retrograde Mercury because it either fizzles out completely or has to be redone within the year. But you know that if your car breaks down or your refrigerator dies on you, you've got to get a new one. All right. On August 28th, Mars is going to go direct in eight Aquarius, excuse me, uh, is going to go direct in 28 Aquarius 37. And that is when things start popping. We will see, uh, just keep your eye on the world situation because that is when things will start moving forward. Uh, if you haven't been watching my Trumpology report, I document it once a month. Every month is there. You can read it. You can watch it. It's very simple. Okay, so everybody's saying, yay! After the 28th of August, when Mars goes direct in 28 and a half of Capricorn, I can start new projects. Actually, yes. But there is a small window of opportunity for that. And this is the rest of the year. All right. I put a star next to September because during September, Mercury is direct, Venus is direct, and Mars is direct. Yay. And uh, those of you who have been following along um, for a while, probably saw the video in which I gave you the optimum dates in September to launch a new project. There's a lot involved in beginning a new business, starting a new project, um, more than just what I'm giving you here. However, in any project that you begin, whether it's a wedding, whether it's a business, whether it's the purchase of a new car, what you're going to want is you want the sun and the moon in lovely aspect to each other, whether the moon is growing or waning. So I'm gonna give you, once again, those optimum dates in September before I give you the rest of the year. And let me, oh, it's so much better when I can see, gosh. Now, on the waning moon, this will look, now this is starting after Mars goes direct. On the waning moon, on August 31st, the moon in Taurus is trine, the sun in Virgo. Lovely earth trine, the trine being the optimum aspect. So I'm suggesting to you that you take advantage of that if you can. If you can't, on September 4th, the moon in Cancer, a water sign, is sextile, the sun in Virgo. A sextile is a much weaker aspect than um, a trine. But if you have a, a, a meeting, that you have to have and you can't change the date, you certainly want to choose uh, September 14th. Excuse me, September 4th. I am wearing my glasses. See, there's retrograde Mercury. Right here from my lab, here I am. Uh huh. I put the glasses on to read and you know, that's exactly what happens on retrograde Mercury. Now, on the growing moon, September 13th, the moon in Scorpio is sextile the sun in Virgo. So we have a Scorpio moon, which is an incredibly powerful position for the moon. It's a water sign, sextile Virgo and earth sign. On the 17th and 18th of September, the moon, both of those days, is in Capricorn and trine Virgo. Those are the optimum dates on the growing moon. Now there's a lot probably going on in your chart. And hold that thought, 17th and 18th. Now on the waning moon, on September 29th, we have a lovely trine in air signs. The moon is in Gemini and it's trining the sun in Libra. Beautiful uh, air trine on the waning moon. Okay, now. Let's keep going. In October, on the 5th, right there, Venus, the planet of love and money and beauty and all things love, lovely and 
musical, just beautiful. It goes retrograde. It goes stationary retrograde in 10 Scorpio 50. We will feel this probably, oh, certainly by the 1st of October, maybe even the end of September. People will be asking me, is Mercury retrograde? No, it's Venus, because when Venus goes retrograde, it feels just like a retrograde Mercury. And it doesn't just affect uh, beauty and love and money. It's like a Mercury retrograde. Doesn't only affect uh, trains, planes, and automobiles. So Venus is retrograde October 5th until November 16th, when it goes stationary direct in 25 of Libra, 25, 15 of Libra. Yay. And you're thinking, good. Now I can start a new project. Uh, no, not yet. That very same day, Mercury tag teams us. November 16th, Mercury goes stationary retrograde in 13 Sag 29. So we've got two planets. Whenever they change positions from direct to retrograde and or vice versa, there's a flux in the energy. And so there's Mercury saying, double whammy, here I am. Mercury goes stationary direct December 6th in 27 Scorpio 17. So from the beginning of October till the beginning of December, Mercury is, uh, we've got Venus and Mercury taking turns, going retrograde and then direct. With everything so confused in the world, just in the United States, we will be having our midterm elections during this time. Um, to say nothing about everything else that goes on on a daily basis. This is why I am suggesting to you that you make sure that you get your three clips forecast, which will not just be a 12 month forecast, but an 18 month forecast, because the July 2019 eclipses are with us until the beginning of 2020. We start 2019 with two eclipses in January, and I'm happy to say neither Venus, nor Mercury, nor Mars is retrograde at that time. Hallelujah. So, I hope this is helpful. I hope that you have plugged this into your chart. Oh, and by the way, if you don't have a copy of your actual chart, I'm not talking about an interpretation, I'm talking about the printout. I'll be happy to send you one. If you uh, just uh, contact me, either go to my website, MaxineTaylor.com, uh, or you know Facebook, whatever. Whatever means you like, you can call me. Send me your month, day, and year, the city where you were born and the exact time you were born. And I will email you, free of charge, a copy of your very own birth chart. If you don't know how to interpret it, uh, on my website, uh, on my YouTube channel, excuse me, that's so much going on. On my YouTube channel, Maxine Taylor Astrologer, I have my Astrology 101 TV shows that will help you interpret it and my Astrology 201 TV shows that will help you forecast it. And so, dear friends, hang in there, and may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.